All right, folks. God bless you. Welcome to This Is It. Before the fire. All right, guys. I've been reading the comments on um, the intermission video, getting ready for delivering Let Us Make Man in Our Image. I noticed that a lot of people, not a lot of people, but there's a swath that just can't get past the reality that there's the Lord God and there's God. Okay, when I deliver this nuclear bomb to the world, it's it has so much data, it's not arguable. It's just not. It's not just, it's impossible to argue. It also goes all the way back to the night I got saved. The night I got saved, the Lord gave me the key to everything, 100% nylon. As crazy as it sounds, turn it upside down, 100% no line. So he was going to show me the 100% truth. I was required to speak 100% truth myself. Um, it was a requirement, and I, I want to make sure everybody understands this. In order for anyone to fully receive the truth, you cannot lie anymore. If you've lied or you have told any lies and you have not repented of those lies or you haven't come clean or you've lied to someone and you're, you're harboring it, you're concealing it, you will never, ever, ever be able to receive the fullness of the truth. It's impossible by definition because Jesus Christ is the truth and him is the fullness of the truth. So if you want to receive the fullness of the truth, you have to speak truth all the time. You can't lie. That was a that was the requirement the night I got saved. Okay, so I'm going to roll out this video is this is your scriptural foundation for let us create man in our image. Right now, this is going to be a little stepping stone for anyone that's having any little mental problems stepping up to this understanding that Jesus Christ, Yeshua, Yehoshua, which means Jehovah saves. Yeho, Jehovah, Shua saves. So Yehoshua in the which is Jesus, you know, in the in the New Testament, 1 Corinthians 15, 45. Yehoshua, Jesus means Yehoshua in, in, uh, in the Hebrew form. Yehoshua means a self-existent eternal Jehovah that saves. I'm going to show it all to you. But I am going to give you the perfection of the Bible in understanding even the name of the Lord God and how it relates to this rolling out of Genesis 1, so you can fully understand it. And I'm going to give you so much evidence that it, you would just have to be a fool to try and argue with it. You're not, by the way, I just want to be very clear. You're not, no one's arguing with me. You're just arguing on what's been given to me. If anyone doesn't believe the Vatican is in the shape of a big snake, you don't belong here. If you don't believe that's a snake wearing a crown, you don't belong here. If you don't believe, if you can't look at that large altar that the Lord God revealed to me and through me, and you can't see that it's a dead sheep, you don't belong here. The truth wasn't meant for you. I'm sorry. But the Bible speaks of it over and over again. It says in Matthew 13, why do you speak to them in parables? And Jesus said, I speak to them in parables, fulfilling the prophecy of Isaiah. By seeing, they see not. And hearing they hear not. And their minds are dull and they cannot turn to me and let me heal them. Okay, so, you know, a lot of, not a lot, but I've seen a, a pretty good swath of people falling into that. The, by virtue of the fact that you don't see or understand it doesn't mean that it's wrong. It just means you don't see it or understand it. Because now I'm going to give you the evidence, okay? So let's let's do the evidence right now. All right. Now, just, I love you guys. It's good to be here. It's good to be back tonight. Um, I've had a really, really tough week. Um, thank you for my birthday. That was super sweet. Every, just thank you, everyone that, 
happy birthday and the cards and all that. Awesome. Thank you. Okay, so let me give you what just the Lord's given me. Now, don't forget my name, Jonathan. It meant nothing to me before I got saved. Jonathan, that was my name. Once I got saved and the Lord revealed to me the meaning of my name, the meaning of my name is so profound, it's mind-boggling. Jonathan means Yahweh has given. Klek means a messenger, a town crier that rings a bell and gathers the church. I don't know if you know this, but the word preacher in the Bible, like Paul, he said, and the Lord that the Lord made me a minister and a preacher. The word preacher is town crier, the same as my name. So anyway, so let me let me lay out the evidence for you so you can just take hold of this. So let's have a little talk real quick, okay? <clears throat> Does everybody know what a sheriff is? The sheriff, he's the he's the head law enforcement guy in a municipality or a town or whatever. Does everybody know what a deputy is? Y'all know what a deputy is? Well, the deputy is not the sheriff, and the sheriff can delegate his authority of being sheriff to to a deputy. That's when you deputize someone. So let me let me show you just the definition. Okay, a person appointed as a substitute with power to act. That's the definition of deputyship. A second in command or assistant who usually takes charge when his or her superior is absent. A person appointed as a substitute with power to act. Okay? Okay, now, forget everything you know. Just forget everything you were ever taught. You know, if you went to church, just take a moment and say, you know what? Let's just look at evidence just for just for a minute. We're going to roll this out. Ready? Okay. And by the way, guys, I've re I'm, I'm working on, I just want you to know, some people say in, in the videos that sometimes the volume for the little clips is real low. I have the volume levels all the way up. So if it does it again in this video, I may have to hunt for another way to do these because I have it all the way up, guys. I don't know what, why it's doing it. So let's see what happens. I've, I've run some test runs and they're fine. So let's see what happens. Okay, ready? Here we go. Remember, a person appointed as a substitute with the power to act, with the power to act. That's what a deputy is. Okay, now I'm going to show you a little clip. You've seen it before, but I'm going to put a, a couple of these clips together to to drive the point home. Why, before I play the clip, let me ask you this. Why do you think, I mean, an honest question to all of you, why do you think, you know, any religious group of people, I don't care who it was, you can pick a name, but any group of people would meet inside of a building that's in the shape of a snake. Why would they build the building in the shape of a snake? Do you think the ones that, like the top dogs, you know, do you think they know the building's in the shape of a snake? Do you think they know the building next to it, Audience Hall, is also a snake? If you look, if you're inside Audience Hall, everybody knows it's a snake. So you have two snakes right next to each other, one wearing a crown, one on the inside that shows La Resurrección, which is really a like a raptor coming up out of the pit. It's really weird. I mean, why would you do that? Have you ever thought about that? Like, why would y'all build your main meeting place in the shape of a freaking snake? The serpent. Well, we know that the serpent was the most subtle of all the beasts of the field which the Lord God made. Right? Who made the serpent? The Lord God. He made the serpent. It's a race of beings, by the way, and it's who, who, well, who does the Bible say the serpent is? You go to Revelation, that old dragon, that great dragon uh, was cast down, that old serpent called the devil and Satan. So the dragon equals the serpent equals the devil equals Satan. All the same. Okay, so if you're meeting in a snake, a serpent, then you got to be worshiping Satan. You have to be by definition. I mean, if you're worshiping truly Jesus, do you think you would meet inside of a big snake with a crown? <laughs> I don't think so. Okay, so now 
let's well how do they come up with this stuff i mean where do they where do they get their ideas from so watch so let's just kind of ponder a few things and let's get you ready okay so here we go the vatican's official english bible the Tao reams bible isaiah 1412 calls lucifer the prince of devils now watch Rome openly invokes Satan Lucifer, the Prince of Devils, again on her Easter Vigil, 2018, to blaspheme Jesus Christ, as the son of Satan Lucifer. Quine scito casum, Christus filius tus, ille in quam lucifer, quine scito casum, Christus filius tus, Christus filius tus, qui regressus ab inferis, humano genidi serenus iluxit. Et tecum vivit et regnat in secula seculorum. All right, so let me go back and show you the beginning of this clip one more time. I want you to look right here. The Vatican's official English Bible, the Do Doe Reims Bible. Isaiah 14:12 calls Lucifer the prince of devils, which we know he's the prince of darkness, he's the prince of devils. But the Vatican's official English Bible. Well, let's go to um, the Douay Reims Bible. The Douay Reims Bible is uh, is a translation of the Bible from the Latin Vulgate. Okay, let me ask you a quick question. Okay, the Latin Vulgate. The Vulgate is a late 4th century Latin translation of the Bible. It was to become the Catholic Church's officially promulgated Latin version of the Bible during the uh, 16th century as the 16 Vulgate and da 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 da. Okay, so it is the official Catholic Bible from Latin. Okay, so the Doe Reims, there it is. You're looking right at it. I just showed it to you. Uh, and so here is the Doe Reims Bible. Uh, I went and got a copy of it. How art thou fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, who didst rise in the morning? How art thou fallen to the earth that, that didst wound the nations? O Lucifer, O day star. All this, according to the letter, is spoken of the king of Babylon. It may be also applied in a spiritual sense to Lucifer, the prince of devils, who was created a bright angel. Okay, but fell in pride and rebellion. But here it is. Lucifer, the prince of devils. Okay, now let's go back and let's watch this one more time. Vatican's official English Bible, the Dowie Reims Bible, Isaiah 1412, calls Lucifer the prince of devils. Now watch. Rome openly invokes Satan Lucifer, the prince of devils, again on her Easter Vigil, 2018, to blaspheme Jesus Christ as the son of Satan Lucifer. Okay, so now let's jump forward to another, let's jump forward to another video. And here's, here's the same mass being sung again by a different priest. So this is, this is obviously not just, you know, some scam deal at all. Here we go. Lucifer matutinus in veniat. Ile in quam Lucifer, 
queen eshito kazum, Christus filius tuus, qui regressus ab inferis, humano generis erenus iluxit, et tecum vivit et regnat in secula seculorum. Okay, I'm going to pause it there now. I just want to make a point real quick so everybody understands. So, where are, are so they're where they're singing is in this building right here. So there's no no questions about it. They're singing here's the Vatican right here. It's in upside the whole building is an upside down cross. See? Here's the cross right here. There's the cross and here's a a keyhole like an old-timey keyhole. And the cross has been turned upside down. That represents us, the race of beings that we are. And it's got turned upside down. And when the cross gets turned upside down, it gets turned into a serpent. See, so the upside down cross makes a pregnant serpent. See, here's the serpent right here. Okay, so, and then, uh, you know, you guys already know what the mouth is. What's the mouth? It's a dead sheep. The window that's right there, that's the mouth of the... The serpent, the window that's the mouth of the serpent, is a dead sheep. So let's just make sure everybody knows this. Okay, so there they all are. There's all the guys. Now these are the same guys that, now these guys, now just think about it. They're inside of a big snake building wearing a crown. Crowns are used for kings. So they're in a snake that's got a crown on it, showing itself to be king. Well, who did the Lord God give all authority in this world to? Who did he give it to? Well, we know it, it's given to Satan because Satan said, even to Jesus, if you'll simply bound, it, in a moment of time, Satan took Jesus to the top of a mountain and showed him all the kingdoms of the world. And he said, all these, all, he says, all authority has been given to me. So all authority has been given to Satan because he's offering the king of kings his his turf. He's like, hey, all this can be yours if you'll just get down and worship me. That's the Bible, folks. That's exactly in the Bible. So that means all authority has been given to who? The serpent. The serpent is Satan. Satan is the serpent. Satan is the dragon. Satan is that old dragon, the serpent, and the devil cult. That's who he is. Okay, so here they all are. Here all the guys are that sing to Lucifer, dawning his own creation. And they're in front of a big altar of a dead sheep. And the dead sheep is right side up when you stand back. That's a male reproduct. That's a penis. And then you turn it upside down and it's a vagina. Okay, and I'm just going to you know, make the point very quickly. So I've drawn it all in. The Lord led me. The Lord God, the Lord God led Jonathan Kleck. Yahweh has given. So the Lord God led this guy named Yahweh has given to see and understand all this information. So here's a penis ejaculating a seed into this, this where, where this light is. There's no doubt about it. There it is. Male reproductive system. Well, it's right side up though, right? The male reproductive system is right side up. Okay, but if we take this whole sheep right here and I and I I turn it upside down, I can if I take the whole thing and I simply turn it upside down, it becomes the female reproductive system. Okay, now Okay, here you go. I want to just make sure everyone gets to see it. So here it is right side up. Right here, it's the male reproductive system. And when you turn it upside down, right here, it's the female reproductive system. So male is right side up, and here is the female reproductive system. Ovary, fallopian tube, ovary, fallopian tube, uterus, cervix, clitoris, opening of the vagina. And then all these angels turn into pubic hair. Well, that's kind of, and it also makes the hair of the sheep, you know, the wool of the sheep. 
Um, so now let me just let this these pictures like try and set up properly. There we go. Okay, so there's no doubt about it. There's male and there's female reproductive systems. Respectively, male is right side up. Female is when you turn the sheep upside down. And then if I simply take the male right here and I put it right here where, where the windows line up, it makes an X. X marks the spot. And yet, which is, you know, just fascinating. I mean, once you get into this whole thing about repentance and understanding the depth of it. So anyway, there's no doubt that this is a dead sheep and that that is male and female reproductive systems. And I want to make one more point. And all those angels right there are melting into semen. But here's something really fascinating. There's all these larger angels down here at the bottom, these female angels and they're reaching up towards the little male angels. These all look like little male angels. And these grown-up females are reaching up, like saying, like, come down to us. And the males are melting. It's all melting into semen. That's a pretty, pretty crazy altar. I mean, that's just kind of one of the biggest revelations this planet's ever seen. But. A lot of people are like, Clegg, you're so repetitive. This resolves everything, just knowing it. That's why the Lord gave it to me. Knowing that the Vatican is a snake, is, and by having the spiritual gift that he's given me, Yahweh is given, Yahweh is given, Yahweh has given, so the spiritual gift that he's given me allows me to understand the Bible in a way that no one ever has. That's a fact. Is that a snake? Is the building a snake? It's a yes or no. The answer is yes, it's a snake. Is the largest altar in the world a dead sheep? Yes or no? Yes, it is. Is it male and female reproductive systems? Yes, it is. Do you know why it's male and female reproductive systems? The reason is, is because in Genesis 1, it says, let us make man in our image. So male and female created he him uh, in the image of Elohim created he him male and female created he them who created them well isn't it inside of a serpent it is right aren't they singing to Lucifer dawning his own creation yes or no yes. I just showed it to you twice, two different two different clips. So, I mean, you can't make this up. Plus, the spiritual supernatural gift that the Lord gave me to share with you, Yahweh has given, I'm sharing with you, the ability the Lord gave me to see this trumps what people's opinions are. People's opinions mean nothing. Opinions are opinions. This is, I'm rolling out fact. That's why the Lord had me ring my the bell on my birthday a year ago at precisely 226. Y'all remember that? Let me show you that just one more time just to remind everybody and especially the naysayers because only the Lord God could do this. The Lord told me he would tell me on my birthday last year, it's documented on YouTube. If anyone doesn't believe it, just go check it out. Well, on my birthday, the Lord told me I'm, I want you to ring that bell outside that uh, someone was kind enough to send and um, he told me to ring that bell on your birthday because my name means Yahweh is given a bell ring or a town crier that rings a bell gathers the church so he had me manifest that into this dimension because I'm a spiritual being in a host body now I was awakened within my host body arise O sleeper wake up from the dead so at a certain moment in time the Lord, in 2002, the Lord God called me. He awakened me in my body. And that's when I was like, what am I doing here? And I was called to service for the Lord God. And then the outflow of the information is a manifestation of Yahweh has given. He's giving through me as a conduit. So he told me to ring the bell on my birthday a year ago. And when I rang it, he, it was it, it, he told me to look at the time you rang the bell 
and it was on the little video, there was only one hour and minute that that bell was rung. Literally, there were no other video clips of the bell actually ringing other than at 226. And the Lord said, look at, look at the time stamp on the bell ringing. 226 and the Lord said look it up in the Bible what 226 is I mean this is in front of a group of witnesses that watched it I had no idea what 226 meant in the Bible so I looked it up remember what the night I got saved 100% nylon read the tags in your shirt and then what did he tell me to do turn it upside down 100% no lion no lion n-o-l-y-n no lion like a redneck would say, hey, no lying. Okay, so anyway, so that means 100% truth. And in order to see the 100% truth in this world, I had to turn everything the opposite direction. Okay, now let me show you 226 real quick. 226, and this is what the Lord showed me. I had He had me ring the bell at 226. It means to speak the truth. I say, speak truth, do truth, maintain the truth. Now look, Alatheo. Literally truthing, speaking reality, truth into a person's life and making a record of what God, what God deems is truth, reality, and fact. Alethuo, literally to truth, includes spirit-led confrontation where it is vital to tell the truth so others can live in God's reality rather than personal illusion. Okay, now, that's all I'm here to do. I'm just here to alatheo. That's it. 100% nylon. Turn it upside down. I'm just here to speak truth to you. If, if you can't receive it, it's not because I didn't speak it. It's simply because some people like to come here and leave comments because they think they're right. But all it means is, they're just one of the ones that Jesus prophesied and or Isaiah prophesied about. And Jesus called out on the carpet and said, they just fulfill the prophecy of Isaiah by seeing they see not, by hearing they hear not, and they cannot turn to me and let me heal them. That's all. Okay, so now I just showed you the meaning of deputyship, right? Let's look at it one more time. A person who is appointed as a substitute with the power to act okay with the power to act okay i just showed you one clip of a priest singing and i uh, showed you the doe reams bible that they call lucifer the prince of devils which is absolutely true and here they are singing to lucifer dawning his own creation i popped up the doe reams bible i proved to you it is the catholic church's uh uh, it's their official Bible uh, from their Latin translation. Uh, I pulled up the actual Doe Reams PDF to show you Lucifer, the Prince of Devils. I showed you another guy singing inside of a snake saying Lucifer dawning his own creation. I showed you the definition of, I showed you the definition of a deputy ship, a person appointed as a substitute with the power to act. Now I'm going to show you Genesis 2, and we'll go to Genesis 1 in just a minute. A lot of people say, Cleck, you're wrong. No, it can't be. And I, and I always tell everybody, look, forget everything you thought you knew. I'm going to show you facts, just facts even if it's spirit-led confrontation. Let me show you some facts. In Genesis 2, thus the heavens and the earth were finished, and all the host of them. Let me show you the word host. The word host means a mass of persons or figurative things, especially regularly organized for war and army. So all the host of them, that means a group that has been amassed for warfare. A campaign, literally or figuratively, specifically hardship, comma, worship, appointed time, army, battle, soldiers, and warfare. 
Okay, so the beginning of the world in Genesis 2, when it was finished, was it was appointed for what? All the hosts of them. What did it just say? Warfare. Uh, a mass that has been assembled for warfare. That's exactly what it says. Okay, which is exactly right. And the spiritual gift I have will prove it over. Literally, I can prove it a thousand times over and over. Watch. And on the seventh day... Is this the Lord God? It's not because it does not say the Lord in front of God right here. And on the seventh day, God ended his work. Let's look at the word God. What is it? Hebrew word 430, Elohim. God's plural in the ordinary sense, but specifically used in the plural thus, especially with the article of the supreme God. We know it's not the supreme God. El is the supreme God, by the way. El, Hebrew word for 10, is the supreme God. So, of the supreme God, and it means magistrates or angels or judges. It also can mean gods, goddess. It can mean all those. Okay, so here we go. On the seventh day, Elohim ended his work, which he had, he, see, he had made, and rested, I didn't know the Lord God needed to rest, and rested on the seventh day from all his work which he had made. Ready? So, the Bible's the Bible no matter when. We can't argue with it. And well, and this will play out. I, I've, I've tried to prove this wrong. I've, I've tried to find a kink in it. There's one scripture that I had to wrestle with a little bit, but I was like, oh, I get it. Because a lot of people don't understand there's a juxtaposition sometimes between the two. But watch. Thus the heavens and the earth were finished and the host of them, a mass of persons or things regularly organized for war. They, that was finished. On the seventh day, Elohim ended his work. Ready? Work. Properly deputy ship. That is ministry, generally employment, never servile. Do you understand that one? Ready? To dispatch as a deputy. Let me ask you this. Is the Lord God a deputy? Don't forget, they're seen inside a big snake. They're inside of a big snake. The building next to them, audience hall, is also a snake. So you got some complex with an upside down cross and a keyhole that turns into a snake wearing a crown. You got another building right next to it called audience hall that's a big snake where the Pope stands in between two big fangs with a big raptor coming out of the pit behind him. They say it's Jesus. So I'm asking you, is the Lord God a deputy? It's a yes or no. No. He's the sheriff. He's the boss. Now, can he delegate authority? Well, if, did he create the serpent? He did, didn't he? What kind of building are they in again? What's the shape of the building? It's a serpent, isn't it? I'm pretty sure they're standing inside of a big snake. I think I showed you all that. Let's take a look at that again. Let's just make sure. Yep, it's a snake. See, they're standing inside of a serpent right here, and right here next to it over here is Audience Hall. It is also a serpent. So here's one serpent. Here's another serpent. I wonder if they're talking about male and female right here. They are, but we'll I'll get to that later. So here's two big buildings that are both serpents. Audience Hall and the Vatican are both snakes. They're standing inside of a snake, singing to Lucifer, dawning his own creation. And there they are again, standing in the same snake, saying the same thing. And in the Bible, in Genesis 2, on the seventh day, Elohim ended his deputyship, ministry, generally employment, never servile. Let's look at the root of the word, just a... To dispatch as a deputy, a messenger, 
specifically of God, that is an angel. Is Lucifer an angel? Was he dispatched? Well, yeah, he was kicked out. See, the Lord God is so pure, he's not going to create a fallen race. But he can deputize someone to do it. I've explained this in other videos where I did the big invisible ball. I said, you know, picture the big invisible ball of energy is the Lord God. And when something breaks away from it, see, it's a singularity. It's many, many, many. It's an ever, ever producing center of light and the Lord God. Well, if something breaks away from it, it's fallen by instantly. The second it breaks away. It becomes a fallen thing. But in order to have life and to have everything, uh, all of it, you can't have one without the other. You know, you have to have a yin for the yang type thing. So the Lord God created Lucifer, yes or no? He did. Do you know who Lucifer is? Do you know he's the anointed cherub that covereth? Do you know what that means? He was specifically chosen to cover. Cover what? A spiritual war. What does it say? The heavens and the earth were finished and the host of them the mass of persons or figurative things, especially organized for war and army. And on the seventh day, God ended his work. Deputyship, generally employment, never servile. To dispatch as a deputy, a messenger specifically of God, that is an angel. Let's go to Genesis 1. In the beginning, Elohim created the heaven and the earth. It doesn't say the heavens, does it? And the earth was without form and void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep, and the spirit of Elohim moved over the face. See, as the part that turns, remember the Adidas original? So if you were up here and you went away, the part that turns, that's the down race, the original... They're the original. Remember Adidas original. Everyone's hanging upside down. It's in my last video. Okay. So moved upon the face of the waters. I want to show you Mayim right here. It means semen right here. But I want to show you something else right here. When you go to Genesis 2 and, and a river went out of Eden to water the garden. See the word water right here? It's not Mayim. And it doesn't have Mayim even as a root, a root to quaff, that is to irrigate, furnish a potion to give water. But I just wanted to show you, there's the word water as well in Genesis 2. And in Genesis 1, the way it's used, it infers semen. Uh, is that why the largest altar in the world, is that why the largest altar in the world is... The spirit of Elohim moving over the semen. So let's let's look uh, let's look at the picture, and let's just break down the picture real quick. So see all the see all the little angels. See all these little angels right here, and then as you move down, are these supposed to be clouds? I didn't know that clouds melted and ran down like the liquidy flow right here. Uh, once I just took a look, once the Lord had me investigate a little bit. Let me go back. So the spirit of Elohim moved over the semen. So Elohim means God's angels or magistrates. So let me uh, let me pull up all these little angels. and. So here's all the grown-up girl angels. See, I made them blue. See all these grown-up girl angels? Look at them all. 
they're all like, come to us, come to us. And all the little male angels, all their little heads are all melting into liquid like honey, semen, right down the altar. Isn't that fascinating? Because the spirit of Elohim, see the word angels right there? Uh, angels moved upon the face as the part that turns of the water's semen. And that's just happens to be what the largest altar in the world is. Wow, that's crazy coincidence, right? Who could see that? Huh. Okay. And then Elohim said, Elohim, not the Lord God, gods of the supreme God, said, let us make man. Let us make, look at the word, asah. Let us make man, adam, in our image. Now you know it's not the Lord God. To shade a phantom that is figuratively an illusion. Resemblance, hence a representative figure. Everybody say these words out loud. Especially an idol. Because Lucifer is the anointed cherub that covereth. Covereth what? The host body system. Oh, now here we go. The flesh is in opposition to the Spirit of God. Why do you think you got to be born again? What's flesh is flesh. What's spirit is spirit. Verily I say unto you, unless you're born again, you will not see the kingdom of heaven. Unless you're born of water and the Spirit, you will not enter the kingdom of God. See, because the flesh is, is not the Lord God. The flesh is what? fights against the Spirit of the Lord God. They are contrary. I mean, if you haven't read Romans then or Galatians, I mean, goodness gracious, the the whole it's all about the Spirit wars against the flesh and the flesh lusteth against the Spirit. They're in opposition, opposition to each other. They're inside of a big snake, remember? singing Lucifer, donning his own creation. Remember? And when Elohim finished his deputy ship, he sat down for a little rest because that part was ready to go. Okay. So now let me give you a couple more scriptures to hold on to because what I'm going to do is when I roll out when I roll out, let us make man of our image, people are just going to chew their nails off. They're just going to like, Arr! but the good news is we have a safety net. We've been born again. So it doesn't matter if our flesh was really made in the image of something really scary and we just couldn't see it though. It was hidden from us because we're made in the image of Elohim. We're not made in the image of the Lord God. We have to be confirmed formed to his image when we get born again. That's why we go through the process of sanctification, burning off the old you, letting the new you take over. Because when you get a spiritual rebirth, you, your eyes become single. There's no longer an angel and demon, which is what you are to begin with. There's an angel right side up and a demon. There's a twin you. There's a right side up you and there's an upside down you. There's a double you. But when your eyes become single and you get inverted, you get re-inverted. You actually got inverted just coming in. But when you get turned up, your eyes become single. That's why the Bible says, if your eye be single, your whole body is full of light. If your eyes double, it's light and dark. You have light and dark. So you have one eye light, one eye dark. But when your eyes become single, your whole body is full of light. See, all the scriptures make sense now. Everything makes total sense. But it required solving Genesis 1 because the churches are liars. What's running them is Satan's little party pack. And they get you in there and they give you a band-aid for a bullet wound and you think you're okay. Okay, so, so Elohim created man in his own image right here. See, look. So Elohim created man in his own image. Look. A phantom, that is an illusion, resemblance, hence a representative figure, especially an idol. So 
Elohim created an idol no matter what. No one can argue with that. That's what it says. The word image is Selem. It means a representative figure, especially an idol. But Lucifer, because of vanity, would do that, right? Isn't that why he got booted out? Oh, yeah. That's why he got kicked out until iniquity was found in him. We're going to look at Ezekiel 28 in just a minute. So anyway, so Elohim created man in his own representative figure, especially an idol, in a representative figure, especially an idol of Elohim, created he him male and female. So the image of Elohim is male and female. So, and so we're going to start there and I'm going to, I'm going to just show you a couple of things real quick. So let me show you the Catholic church. Um, let me show you this in the Catholic church real quick. Okay. That that's called, that's called the double headed Phoenix. By the way, Donald Trump has that as part of his logo on his golf course. Okay. Now here's the head of a serpent over here spinning around to the right. Okay. See the serpent. I'm going to put it right there. That crown is a serpent. See, like right here where I'm putting the serpent's head. See the crown? That's a serpent. Right here. But here's a double-headed phoenix. Do you know why it's double-headed? It's male and female. Opposite energies. Double-headed, male and female. And see, the serpent rules over the male and female because he created it. In Genesis 1, let us create man in our image. So male and female created he him. Well, how come it says God and it says our? Oh, because it's many in one. That's why they put it on the dollar bill. It says e pluribus unum. In God we trust e pluribus unum. Many out of one. Out of one, many, many. E pluribus unum. So, See, right here, this is straight out of the Catholic Church. And this is a serpent, but it's a crown. And see, it makes a V and a V. And that's like the two Vs intersecting, making the W. But look at the X right under the serpent. See, right here, it makes the X right there and there. And that is because the serpent runs that whole female energy thing, which is a sex chromosome. So let's go all the way back to the ancient Hittites. Way back, way, way back in history. Looky right there. There's that double-headed phoenix. Also looks like a heart. And it's because your heart is divided now when you come into the system. Now, let me just show you a good example of... There you go. See, that's your condition. You got two different energies. And they're at war within the system because you were willing to come into it. Angels have free will. And if they make the choice to come into it, then they're part of it. That's why you have stuff like Lady Gaga you know, at the Grammy Awards or whatever. And she's wearing a dress that's obviously got a serpent on it. I mean, why would you have a serpent on your dress? Here's a really big question. Why, why, if you had a serpent on your dress, would you also have an insect on it? Because, see, the serpent race is the above-ground race hunting for God's angels so they die in their sins. And then their souls go to the pit to feed insects, a, a, a locust race that has tails like scorpions. And they're going to come out in Revelation 9. It says they come out of the pit when the pit opens because that's what this is really all about. That's what the whole, that's what the beginning to end is. You understand? So they started this thing in order to destroy God's angels. Lucifer said, I will arise above the stars of El, the Almighty. The word stars means angels, princes. So, Oh, what does it say in Genesis 2? Uh, and the host of them was finished. The mass that has been organized for war. So see, the beginning of the world was organizing a war. Between who? Lucifer's demons and God's angels. And the bait was host body system. Fornication. Sex. So that's why they make sure they put that stuff in their altars. That's why there's male and female right there. Look at it. I mean, no one can tell me that's not the female reproductive system. No one can tell me that. No one can tell me that's not the male reproductive system. Why is one right side up and one upside down? Huh. 
so now let's take a look at this picture. Let me show you how profound and how what a what an amazing image. Look at that. Look at that image. Look at what you're looking at. That's what they worship. So they're inside of a snake worshiping their source of energy. And Lucifer, which is called the light bearer, the light bringer, he set his heart as the heart of Elohim to bring them here. I'll prove it. Ready? So see, Lucifer, Lucifer, he set his heart as the heart of Elohim. They're like, he's like, I can give this to you. I can give you host bodies. Come with me and you can have it all. You won't die. Trust me. He lied. He used them and carried them away as merchandise to use their energy to open the pit so he can come out and make war against the Most High. Watch. Ready? Let's go to the Bible. The Bible always bears out the truth. Okay, so let's go to Ezekiel 28. And the word of the Lord came again unto me, son of man, saying to the prince of Tyre, thus so saith the Lord God, self-existent, eternal Jehovah, because thine heart is lifted up, lifted up. And now I said, I am a, what is that word right there? God, look at that. See that Hebrew word 410? Mighty, the almighty. See, Hebrew word 410 is the almighty God. Not Hebrew word 430. 410 is the almighty God. But look, if you just read the word God, and you read the God over here, and then God over here, and then God over here, and you didn't know one was the Almighty and one was Elohim, you would have no idea of what's going on. You'd be like, what? But see, this is the way the Lord God taught me. The Lord God's the one that put me in Esau. He told me I had to read the scriptures this way. I, I complained. I was like, what? That's not fair. <laughs> I was just like an idiot, total like kid. So dad trying to give you some amazing gift and I'm sitting there. Woo anyway, I'm glad he slapped me around. Anyway, so here we go. Thou hast said, thus saith the Lord God, self-existent, eternal Jehovah. Look at this. So right here, the Lord God is 3069, capital G, capital O, capital D. It's 3069, which is... Look, the self-existent eternal Jehovah, which is Jesus. Thus saith the Lord God, because thine heart is lifted up, thou hast said, I am, look, God, Hebrew word, 410. It means the Almighty, and it's from the root 352, which means a ram, like a, and it means a chief politically, you know, Lord God, a chief politically, Lord God, not God, chief, Lord God. Also a ram, you know, a sheep from its strength and, uh, and, and a strong support. Okay, so thus saith the Lord God, because thine heart is lifted up and thou hast said, I am the Almighty, I sit in the seat of, look, Elohim. See, Lucifer's getting all cocky because he's like, hey, I sit in the seat of Elohim, God's. I sit in the seat, I sit in the seat, a site, abstractly, a session, an abode, a, the place or the time, implication, population, assembly. I sit in the seat of Elohim in the midst of the seas, yet thou art a man, because now he's been cast down, and this is Ezekiel uh, opening his mouth with the Lord God speaking through Ezekiel, telling him what's up. Thou art a man and not the Almighty, see, Hebrew word for Tim. Though thou set thine heart as the heart of Elohim. See, right there. Behold, thou art wiser than Daniel. There is no secret that they can hide from thee. So, and then it says, and by thy, by thy great wisdom and by thy traffic, thou hast increased thy riches. And the word riches means a force, whether of men or resources, army, see? When it says uh, that you have increased your riches, the word riches right here, it means an army, a force, like an army, by thy traffic. Now, let me show you the word traffic, merchandise, traffic, but look what it says, a spice merchant, 
to travel for trading. Do you know why? Because he led the angels away into another system like a spice merchant took them away and sold them into slavery. That's why there's a band called the Spice Girls that sing a song, The Two Become One. Get it? I mean, <laughs> where do you come up with the name for the Spice Girls? That's where you get it. Okay. Therefore, thus saith the Lord God, because thou hast set thine heart as the heart of Elohim, behold, I shall bring disaster upon you, and uh, I'm going to tear you to I'm going to tear you down to the pit I shall bring thee down to the pit and thou shalt die the deaths of them that are slain in the midst of the seas wilt thou say before him that slayeth thee I am a Elohim but thou shalt be a man and no L in the in the hand of them that's him that slayeth thee here you go thou art the anointed cherub thou art the anointed cherub that covereth lick in the sense of expansion, outspread, that is with outstretched wings, consecrated, cherub, a cherub, or imaginary figure, a cherub. So he's talking to Lucifer. Thou art the anointed cherub that covereth to entwine as a screen, to fence in, to cover over, to shut up, to join together. Do you know what he's talking about? Us. He's the flesh. Thou art the anointed cherub that covereth. That's why it says in Isaiah 30, Thou you cover with the covering, but not of my spirit. Because the flesh is just a covering. That's it. Where the war takes place. And the flesh was made by Lucifer as a, uh, a mass for battle against the Lord God by taking Elohim away, you know, like a, a spice merchant sold him into slavery so he can use their energy to make war against the Most High. It's perfection. Perfection in data. It's all from the Lord, though, guys. All glory to God. Thou was perfect in thy ways from the day that thou was created till iniquity was found in the perverseness of evil and to distort the truth to distort morally deal unjustly evil and perverseness and what did he do he turned everybody upside down here i want to read you someone put this in uh someone put this in the comments the other day and i was like good one uh you, there's a song by the by the Beatles. Why would you name your band the Beatles? That's a bug. Why? Why would that be attractive in any way, shape, or form? Hey, we're the, we're the Beatles. We're the bugs. That's good. Um, and here is, I look at the world and I notice it's turning while my guitar gently weeps. With every mistake, we must surely be learning. Still, my guitar sim gently weeps. I don't know how you were diverted. You were perverted too. I don't know how you were inverted and no one alerted you. I look from the wings at the play you are staging while my guitar gently weeps. Because I'm sitting here doing nothing but aging. Because once you come into the system, you have a host body that's subject to decay and death. That's what it is. That's what the host body system is. It's a shell that decays and dies. You don't live forever in this thing so deputy what's a deputy someone with the power to act someone with the power to act well isn't lucifer the anointed cherub that covereth he has the power to act to cover why are they singing inside of a big snake to lucifer dawning his own creation because it's true he was deputized to do it Okay, now, what about let us create man in our image? <laughs> it's like, that's a two to three hour video that's coming. I have so much information, it's going to make people freak out. But anyway, it's it's conclusive. Now, let me give you a couple other scriptures because you got to have these. I want to make sure you have all your scriptures. Let's go to John, John chapter 10. John chapter 10, when Jesus is talking about his sheep, 
He says, he, I am the good shepherd. He said, I lay down my life for the sheep. Okay, verily I say to you, I am the door of the sheep. There it is. Anyone that came before me were thieves and robbers, but the sheep did not hear them. I am the door. By me, if any man enter in, he shall be saved and shall go out and find pasture. Um, I have come that they might have life and have it more abundantly. I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd giveth his life for the sheep. So what's the common thing about God's God's flock, we're called sheep. What's the largest halter in the world? It's a dead sheep. Oh, because they got carried away captive into the serpent's domain. Remember, all power and authority has been given to me. That's what Satan said to Jesus. Jesus is El, the Almighty God, in the flesh. But if he wants to get any of his children back, he has to come into this system and buy them back in kind. He has to buy them back in the flesh just to get them back. And then you have to turn to Jesus and say, I'm sorry, I deserve my punishment, forgive me. And you ask Jesus for forgiveness, then your sins are imputed on him as a proxy. You get inverted, you get con inverted the other way, you get converted, your eyes become single, just like the magnets I showed you that wouldn't go together. When you flip one, they both go together instantly and you're saved. Awesome. Okay, let's go to John. Ready? So they're going to stone Jesus, and he says, Many good works have I shown you from my Father. For which of those works do you stone me? And the Jews said, For a good work we stone thee not, but for blasphemy. Y'all know what blasphemy is? Vilification. I get it all the time. People try and vilify me all the time. Johnny's evil. Some, you know, I, I just, I got to throw this out there. Some people think when they come on, they say, I rebuke you. <laughs> I just want you to know I'm laughing at you. You can't rebuke me. <laughs> so crazy. I rebuke you in the name of Jesus. No, 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 no. You, you can't rebuke me in the name of Jesus. <laughs> I know you think you can. But no, you can't. <laughs> so anyway, and they say, I rebuke you in their own name. That's good. Anyway, yeah, blasphemy means vilification. We are stoning, stoning you for blasphemy because thou being a man makest thyself God. Let me ask you this. Was Jesus a man that made himself God? It's a yes or no. No. He was El, the almighty God, that came into the system that's the serpent's system. He came into the fallen world. The whole world's fallen. That's why the Bible says uh, uh, Jesus was in, God was in Christ reconciling the world unto himself. He was reconciling the whole world unto himself. Go, go look it up. I just quoted it. God was in Christ, in Jesus reconciling the world unto himself. Why would the whole world have to be reconciled? Because the whole thing's fallen. So here we go. Thou being a man, makest thyself God. Nah, you got it wrong. He's God that made himself a man. Jesus answered them, is it not written in your law? Now, no one can argue with this. He said, he's questioning them. He's asking them a question. He says, is it not written in whose law? your law see because they want they put themselves under the law is it not written in your law quote i said ye are gods and then he tells you the scriptures can't be broken if he called them gods unto whom the word of god came and the scriptures cannot be broken say ye of him he's now he's talking about himself right here now he's going to talk about himself he says, so say ye of him whom the Father has sanctified and sent into the world, thou blasphemest because I said I am the Son of God. So he just said, hey guys, your own scriptures say you're gods. I just said I'm the Son of God and you're saying I'm blaspheming because I was sanctified and sent into the world? He's like, he's questioning them. He's, you know, he's making them in 
answer the question. And so you're saying that don't he's like, don't your own scriptures even say that I said ye are gods? So they're busted. So what he did is he just busted everybody. And he was simply read, read the words. He said, I said ye are gods. Well, that means he actually said it somewhere in the scriptures. He said it in Psalm 82. Psalm 82. Elohim standeth in the congregation of the mighty. Oh, El, the almighty God. See, Elohim standeth in the congregation. Look at the word mighty. 410, the mighty, the almighty. He judges amongst the Elohim. How long will you judge unjustly and accept the persons of the wicked? So it shows you right there that Elohim is judging unjustly and accepting the persons of the wicked right there. It says, how long will you judge unjustly and accept the persons of the wicked? It says it right here. Who's he talking? Elohim. Defend the fatherless and do justice to the afflicted and the needy. Deliver the poor and the needy. Rid them out of the hand of the wicked. And then he says, they know not. Neither will they understand. They walk on in darkness. All the foundations of the earth are out of course. I have said ye are gods. Right there, guys. And all of you are children of Elion, the most high God. But you shall die like men and fall, be cast down, cast out, die, divide. See, divide, be divided like one of the princes, a head person that had rule, master prince that had rule in heaven. O Elohim, judge the earth, for thou shalt inherit all nations. Everyone was like, what does that mean? Well... I'm an Elohim. I mean, I'm an angel. So if I rise, then who do I judge? I judge the other angels that didn't rise by virtue of the fact that I did. So if the, tr so if the Lord God takes over my host body and I get converted, my eyes become single, won't I judge the other gods, the angels? Of course I will, because they didn't get converted. So, see, a lot of people just don't understand the language. But the Lord's made me very proficient at what he's taught me. And I'm supposed to give it to you as a gift. Yahweh has given. So, Okay, so there those scriptures are. Those are not arguable. Anyone that tries to argue with that is just delusional. But the Lord said, in the end, I will send them strong delusion so that they will believe the lie. You see that all day, every day now everywhere so anyway so there those are um let me see uh let me see if i i just want to check something real quick okay so psalm 83 they have taken crafty counsel against thy people and consulted against thy hidden ones to hide by covering over we're those hidden ones, by the way, because we're hidden in the system in host bodies. They have said, come, let us cut them off to destroy, to make them desolate from being a nation. And the word na na from being a nation, let them cut them off. For they have consulted together to advise. They have consulted together with one consent. With one heart, they are confederate. They are confederate. They made a compact, like cutting between two pieces of flesh. They are confederate against thee. So, recap. Not one snake. Not just the Vatican audience hall. And I want you to know that because when I get into let us make man in our image, why are both building snakes? Okay, so you have two serpents next to each other. That's going to play into uh, that parthenogenesis because reptiles can, they can self-fertilize. 
and create more of themselves and then they can change their gender. They can start interbreeding, go forth and multiply. Doesn't say go forth and get married and have children and families. It says go forth and multiply, make more, multiply. Who? I mean, huh, the serpent race. So now everything should be super duper, super, super, super clear. Inside of a big snake singing Lucifer dawning his own creation from the Dewey Reams Bible. And it does say Lucifer, the prince of devils. That's who they're singing to. They say, uh, here's it is again, the word deputy, the word deputy. Let's see, let's see. A person appointed as a substitute with the power to act. And in Genesis 2, no matter what anybody says, thus the heavens and the earth were finished and all the host, a mass organized for war, war against who? The Lord God. So the heavens and the earth were finished and the host of them the mass that was organized for war against the Lord God. And on the seventh day, Elohim ended his work, his deputyship, which is never servile, and to dispatch as a deputy as an angel. Okay, so he ended his deputyship, and then Genesis 2, after that, and the Lord God the self-existent eternal Jehovah formed man. And this is where the other team that would be the opposing battle comes in. This is where the, so the Lord God forms man. He puts him to sleep, takes Eve out of his side. And then those all will come in on. That will be the battle from the beginning of the end, the beginning of the earth till the end of the world. Just right there. I mean, just proved it emphatically without, any, and there's no, there's nothing nebulous about what I just showed you. It's perfection, perfection. So now let's just, let's just sit on that for a little while. Okay. Let's just, just enjoy it. Just sit there and enjoy it. And think about all these, all these images I have. I have tens of thousands of images that prove everything I've shown you, all of it. Everything I have points to all this as being the absolute fact. No way around it. So anyway, and I just showed you absolute facts. Okay, 226. So anyway, so let's just sit on that for a day or two and let that congeal in your, your spirit, meditate on it, and then I'll break out the new scriptures and I'll show you the horrifying image of Elohim that, you know, when you look past the surface, when you look past the veil, what's what's going on? Okay. All right, guys. I love you in Christ. I'm gonna wrap it up there. Uh, I don't want to. I don't want to do any more. Uh, I think the very next video will be the uh, "Let Us Create Man in Our Image," and I'll show you then all that evidence. But you got to have all this first. If you don't know the scriptures and you go into it, it, it'll be an overload. You'll freak out. All right, guys, this is you. Again, thank you so much for the cards and thank you for just all the cool notes. And so here's another thing. Some people have asked me to like to reach out in emails. Guys, I can't really do that. First of all, there's a pretty there's a pretty big line and I would be I, I read comments and I go through so much stuff. I'm truly overloaded. I mean, I have too much on my plate. And some people have written me like personal letters asking me to email them personally. The other thing is right now I don't have another email account that I have access to that I, I would be able to really do it. And there would be just too much, too much. And I, if I did one, I would have to do a lot of them. And it would just, because it wouldn't be fair. You know what I mean? It's just too many people have asked. Anyway, but this is my, you know, I comments, leave your comment. I read comments. And, uh, you know, and I respond to comments. I mean, not all of them, but obviously. But I read the comments and I check in on them. And I read all letters, everything I, everything that comes in the mail, I read it. I mean, I'm sure there's been one or two that got set off to the side in my uh, little ADD party. But anyway, 
so yeah thank you for everything thanks for my all the birthday cards and all the cool stuff all right guys group hug it's gonna be okay i guess you know i mean really i guess in the end here everybody really wants to know one thing right are you gonna be okay i you know i mean let's be honest it's like well am i gonna be okay if you're in christ you'll be okay is it possible you know things might get sketchy and scary absolutely um fear not once you're converted death is no longer burdensome see death lives in you once you've been converted you've overcome death when you cut that bluetooth line to the pit your eternal life's already begun you just haven't received your glorified body yet and you get a glorified body we'll go over that in the next uh in the next video because i want you guys to see it uh you know encourage you so we all get a glorified body. We're joint heirs with Christ. We get the same thing Christ got. Same thing. We're many in one as well. We're all parts of the body. All right. All right, guys. I love you in Christ. Okay, guys. God bless. Yeah, and I, you know, I'm sorry, man. I've had, I've had like several days of just. Uh, I'm not gonna go into a whining thing, but my burden is. The Bible says, with much wisdom comes much sorrow. I probably have more mental overload than any human being could even imagine. It's it's mind boggling. But anyway, you know, you don't you don't get the top of the mountain without the bottom of the valley. So praise God. All right, guys, peace and grace. I'm glad that was on. <laughs> All right, guys, I love you. Peace and grace. Take care.